Hi guys, today's clip is from a recent channeling session that I had with a private client and I felt that the topic was relevant to more than one of you. And so um, I'm sharing it here. I'm experimenting with reading out the question for you. So do let me know in the comments if that format works or if you'd like to read it yourself or if you have some idea of some other way to allow you guys to know what the question was before the channeling segment actually begins and Vagreen gives their answer. I often feel responsibility for the negative feelings or state of mind of others. This can be both to people who are close to me, but also to people I barely know. Even though I know I shouldn't feel like this, I often have very strong emotions. I feel the urge to help or to intervene in some way, to make changes or to adjust. And if I don't act on these urges, I feel guilty. I find I also exaggerate the degree of suffering of other selves. So I feel that I don't really have a realistic grasp on things many times. It also occurs with my children, and I feel that if I don't rush to help them, something bad could happen. So my question is, how do I discern between real situations where I would need to help and a situation where I don't necessarily need to help? How can I alleviate this emotion of oppressing responsibility to others? How can I be compassionate while also maintaining my boundaries? Yes. The first action that you can take would be to recognize that this pattern or this tendency in yourself to save people from their own emotions is a pattern that you had to adopt to be safe as a child. It is something that you learned before you had conscious awareness of being able to choose your beliefs. And therefore, it is not actually your patterning. It is patterning that has been given to you. It was in that a survival mechanism in that at some point you had a example of what would happen if you were not responsible for the feelings of others and the consequences to that left you with the sensation that you would be either abandoned or were not worthy or did not have value in your family structure if you were not the custodian of the feelings of those around you this was also perhaps a thing that you saw play out in the relationships of the beings in front of you that you thought were emotionally mature beings or that were those who were meant to give you example of how to interact in the world and therefore it was repeated in you because in seeing it occurring with the people around you you thought well this must be the way to live in the same way that a lion cub will emulate its mother in the hunt so first the thing to do would be to understand that this at some point did have a purpose and the purpose was valid. Therefore, the behavior itself has had its usefulness and has served you in the past, perhaps when you were a child, and you have now evolved to the point where in the same way a child puts away its toys because it has learned social interaction and no longer needs to play with dolls in order to experiment that, they allow those things that no longer serve them to become less pertinent in their day-to-day -day existence. Although, yes, they may play at times, but certain toys are age-specific or developmental level-specific. And in this case, you were not provided the information that perhaps that mechanism did not serve you anymore up until this today. Today, you know that this mechanism does not serve you anymore and you are having difficulty letting go of it. Or it seems as if you are having difficulty letting go of it because you see it in your environment or you see it arise in yourself as anxiety followed by guilt. If there is no action taken on your part to aid these people who perhaps do not actually need your help in the first place. So step one is understanding that this does not serve you any longer, that it did serve you at some point, and that your desire is to put away this system of behaviors the same way you would put away some blocks that were scattered on the floor. The next step is to understand that the non-servingness of this behavior is not only detrimental to you or can be detrimental to you in that you find yourself not having boundaries or being in a position where your boundaries are permeatable, but not only does it harm you in that way, but it also does not aid in the person that you believe yourself to be helping. Because any person who finds themselves in a situation where they are having difficulty of any form, whether it is emotional, physical, or other, they are being presented that difficulty specifically for their own growth. 
Sometimes that growth involves learning how to ask others for help, in which case you are standing on the sidelines awaiting for that request. Otherwise, they are being presented with a challenge that they can find a myriad of ways of overcoming on their own level. So in the case of your children specifically, and this occurs often with parents, is that they are overly helpful because they are trying to compensate for this sensation of them themselves being uncomfortable with uncomfortable emotions. Why are they uncomfortable with uncomfortable emotions? Because as a child, the uncomfortable emotions became their responsibility and they were often blamed for the emotions of their caretakers or their siblings or their peers. So are you truly helping the other being or are you helping yourself to get away from the other being's uncomfortable emotions is the first question that you may ask yourself. The question about discerning between what actually requires aid and what does not can also be simplified into if someone has asked you for help, then you have the consent of their free will to intervene and aid in the ways that they have asked you to aid. If you do not have someone ask you for help, then it is up to your discernment. But we would say that it is very, very broad in that one does not actually need your help almost any of the time. Yes, if a car accident has occurred and if you were not to aid the person, they would certainly have a finality of their lives, then yes, you would aid them. If a being is getting too close to the ledge of a cliff, then yes, you should tell them that it is the case that they are too close. Perhaps they are not aware, but they may then decide to continue heading in that direction to intervene in any way to someone's life path when it is not life or death or it is not of the most utmost urgency is often not allowing them to have the most direct route to learning what it is that they are wanting to learn. Now, this can be also trickled down to, for example, a child forgetting some books at school. If they have forgotten their books repeatedly at school, you do not continue to jump into the car to go get the books for them, because then how would they ever learn that the teacher would be disappointed in them for not having the books? Or how would they ever learn that then when they come to the day of the exam, they do not have the information in their head that was provided in that material? They would need to learn that on their own. If you are jumping in the car every time they have forgotten their books at school, what you are actually teaching them is that they do not have to responsibilize themselves as long as someone is looking out for them. But in any life, one's parent can only be around for as long as they are around for. And to misequip your children by saving them from their problems is actually detrimental in the long term, even though it saves you from the discomfort in the short term. So even though you didn't ask for help with this particular topic, I do hope that this channeling session was helpful to you. Um, I'm going to continue to bring you these small clips. Please also remember that you can always ask Vagarian your own questions by going over to my website at www.jpherman.com forward slash ask Vagarian. And that is the best place to put your questions to Vagarian in the meantime, while we wait for more live events to recommence in September. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye-bye.